What's going on? It's your boy Jay coming at you with another Splatter Talk Cinema video. I know we've been MIA during this pandemic and I apologize for that. I hope everyone is doing very well, healthy, and happy. The movie I'm reviewing today was made almost 31 years ago today. Holy shit, I'm getting old. Anyhow, I remember watching this movie when I was like 9 years old. This movie was my mother's favorite horror movie. The movie I'm talking about is Ron Underwood's Tremors. Let's get into it. Written by S.S. Wilson and Brent Maddock and a budget of $11 million, Tremors introduces us to Val and Earl, two handymen. Looking to get the hell out of the town of Perfection, Nevada, population 14, and relocate to Bixby, Nevada. After turning down work for free beer, Val and Earl start to come across some very weird shit. After a few murders, the boys come across what's killing their friends. A big ass fucking worm with nasty worm things shooting out of its mouth. After this discovery, can Val and Earl save the day in perfection? Okay. The effects in this movie are more practical due to the time this movie was made. I love the fact that an effects studio came up with this design of this nasty looking son of a bitch and worm. When the graboids come out of the ground, it looks real as hell. You can't see any puppeteers or moving of the prop or anything like that. The inside of its mouth is gross as shit. Kind of reminds me of Audrey 2 in Little Shop of Horror. That thing was fucking gnarly. The kills in this movie were very entertaining. Some of the kills were very good. It made me cringe in my seat when I was a kid. The most entertaining death to me was the doctor and his wife. That death showed incredible strength that the grab boys had. The cast was very good. Contrary to Kevin Bacon being in Friday the 13th and Footloose first, this was my first movie being introduced to him. I thought he was very funny and believable in his role. My favorite line from him is when he and Fred Ward's character Earl found the second person dead in perfection. His reaction pretty much summed up our thoughts during the year of 2020. Oh, Jesus! What the hell's going on? I mean, what the hell is going on? Each character had a partner which they played off of perfectly. Kevin Bacon had Fred Ward, Earl. Their camaraderie was very funny and priceless. They really did carry the movie. A delight to see in the movie was Reba McIntyre. I thought she was going to be a terrible actress and she did a great job. I actually believed her relationship with Michael Gross' character Bert. She knew her guns and didn't sound like she was reading from a cue card or something. Michael Gross and Reba McIntyre's characters was another great pairing in the movie. Finn Carter's character, Rhonda? Yeah, shit, Rhonda, what happened to you? Anyway, she was a seismologist, the brains of the movie. The scene I love was when they asked her yet another question. Well, earlier in the movie, she said that this was unprecedented, meaning no one had ever come across it. Through the movie, they kept asking her about the graboids. On the water tower, her response to the question was priceless. Hey, Rhonda, what do you think it's trying to do now? Why do you keep asking me? I laugh at that part to this day. The things I didn't like about the movie were very noticeable. The things that I'm talking about are like the voiceovers placed during post-production. You could tell the actor didn't say what they said, if you get what I mean. The same shit happened in Freddy vs. Jason. I'll have to pass that message myself, won't I? Hmm? I can't fucking stand that part. Another thing is when you meet all the characters in Juan's general store. I feel like I know who's gonna die and who's gonna survive in the movie. 
My buddy Derek over at Derek's Horror Corner talked about plot armor in one of his recent videos. A link to Derek's YouTube channel will be in the description. He and his wife make very good and insightful content on the horror genre. Go check them out. They're dope. Anyway, I witnessed the plot armor in Tremors. I knew who would be safe and who would be fodder, so that kind of threw me off. You know, come on. So you mean to tell me you thought the road workers were going to survive? And the only person that I thought would die and didn't was fucking Melvin. God, I couldn't stand him. I was wanting him to get it. Any prankster in a movie, I want dead. Sorry, Shelly. Another thing that I didn't like was how curious Jim, the doctor, was after realizing his generator was sucked into the fucking ground and spit back out. Especially after Violent Earl told people about old man Fred on the fucking tower drier than a popcorn fart. Get the fuck out of here. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. Since I was a kid, I always wondered what the fuck is on that road worker's lips. For the life of me, I don't know what the hell that shit is. Maybe it is shit. Looks like he was changing oil with his mouth or something. Anyway, this movie's a classic to me. It may be because of the nostalgia I feel for it, but this movie was very entertaining from top to bottom. Val and Earl were great. The suspense was there. The element of surprise was there without the bullshit of jump scares. The dialogue between the characters was very well written. The location made it that much scarier and the movie was shot very well. All in all, I gotta give Tremors a A minus. Anyhow, I appreciate you stopping by Splatter Talk Cinema Review. If you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button, press the bell so you don't miss anything Splatter Talk. Give us a like and share the video with one of your friends. Go ahead, give us a comment down below. Let me know what you thought about the video as well. Make sure y'all stay safe out there. It's your boy Jay, Splatter Talk Cinema Review. Happy 2021. Stupid son bitch. Knocked itself cold. Called my ass. He's dead. We killed it. Fuck!